three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today we have a smaller roundtable. Uh, Scott and Tate uh, are not able to make it, but that being said, we're a solid three man roundtable today. I've got Mike Zeno, Zen Master. Mike. Mike, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. And joining us is Jot Not Pro, Landopia.com, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. All right, we got a lot to cover on this roundtable, right? Um, the first one, the first topic of discussion is, you know, there's this, like investment banking, the old saying was, buyers are liars, sellers are worse, right? So we're sending out offers and we're doing our pricing and the offers come back and they say they want to sell. And you can't wait, you email them back or you call them back, say, I want to buy, right? But you got to give me seven days due diligence or whatever it is, right? And then you're ready to close and then crickets. Where the hell do they go, right? So how do you deal with that, Eric Peterson? The seller that says they want to sell, but then they don't want to sell, or maybe who knows what happened? Well, I think, um Typically, the, the best way to handle that is to um, involve a mobile notary in that case. I, I typically don't do that. Um, usually, I'll just close directly with the seller um, by emailing them the deed, letting them print it, take it to their bank, sign and notarize it. But if they don't respond to that or they have hesitation about it, then the next step is, yeah, you know, bring in a mobile notary. Um, let that notary make the arrangements with uh, the seller to to meet up and you know um, prepare the the mobile notary with the with the check as the payment for the land as well as the documents that need to be signed and um, let them kind of track down that seller for you and and work it out. I like it. I like it, Mike Zeno. What do you do? Well, I'm going to lead off with something that you said and. and- Scott's not here, but he's here in spirit. Money loves speed, right? So you were talking about seven days. And I think that could, um, it is very real to people are new in the business. You know, they get the first deal or two to come across and it's time to do the due diligence, the time to close on it. And now we reach another place where you have that paralysis by over analysis. You, you're going to start really getting caught up in the details. And, you know, there's only a few things you really need to know about this property if you're going to buy it. And these are the things that we teach our students so they don't get caught by that you know, I run into that brick wall, you might say. So the thing is, you have someone who wants to sell just like you have someone that wants to uh, buy. You want to close quickly. So you, how are you going to close quickly? Well, you're going to know if it's a good deal right away. You're going to know how to go through the steps of the due diligence. Uh, if it's a new area, you want to make sure that you, you cover what you need to cover, but you do it quickly. And we do that with our systems. We do that with our VAs, and we make it happen. So the quicker it can happen on both sides, selling and buying, is, the more likely it's going to happen. I think it also parlays into something else is that if you don't have tons of mailings going out, you're going to have maybe one or two accepted offers come back. And then it's kind of like the scarcity mentality. You're, you're like, all right, I have this one, you know, I got, then you get into, it's not a Scott, I got to have Landitis, right? You got this one accepted offer and now you really want to make it happen. And, uh, you just get hung up on that. So if we had a whole stack of accepted offers, like that's my goal and every day that's how it works. I have a stack of offers that I can accept and I take the most lucrative or the, the lowest lying fruit. And if there's things that if someone starts to, you know, uh, drift away or they don't respond, that does not bother me. I'll put them in the queue. They'll stay in contact with my VAs and other deals will come. So I think it's really, you hit a, upon a few really I, probably pain points for people that are new at the business, but Again, that comes with the training, uh, obviously through coaching with us, but, you know, experience and able to uh, make things happen quickly. Yeah, but let's, let's play devil's advocate, right? Let's <laughs> say that I'm, I'm Eric Peterson and, yes. I've, you know, I've invested all my money in Jot Not Pro Stock and now I've got no more money, <laughs> yes. right? And this guy wants us to close, you want to close fast, just yes. like Mike said, but I don't have the cash to close fast, uh, right? I want to lock it up. But I want to close, you know, once I go and, and maybe find, you know, a guy like me to maybe invest, right, and right. give Eric money. So what do you do in that situation? 
Well, if you don't have the money, like you're, you, you just said, you have options. I mean, one of them is to sign it, get under agreement and sign, sell that agreement to somebody else. I mean, that's pretty straightforward and simple. Get somebody else's experience and have them close within a day or two. Because if you were to bring it to one of us and you wanted us to work with you or you wanted to sell us the deal, if it just as an example, then we would close very quickly because we have our systems in place. We have our VAs in place. So I'll bring it right back to that, right? It's You, you definitely have options. You don't... It, you really aren't limited in this business by not having money. I look, I started 40 grand in debt. I didn't have, you know, there was no money to be had, but you can do minor deals and one way. Also, you can partner with people. Uh, you can sell the uh, agreement to somebody else. It's just so many things you can do. So yeah, money is not the issue here at all. You know, it's so funny. And Eric, I'd, I'd like to get your take on it. I'd almost make the argument that unlike any other real estate investing niche where you might have to go out and, and raise money or you know, you've got to get a, a third party bank, like these larger deals. In our niche, money's never the issue. No. Eric, what do you think? Have you ever had a pass on a deal because you didn't have the money? I haven't. Um, I've been able to, to either come up with some kind of alternative you know, way to lock up the property, whether that was through an option or you know, finding money elsewhere. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess I, I've always found a way if I want the deal um, to be able to, to lock it up and close it one way or another. Awesome. Tate Litchfield from FrontierPropertiesUSA.com just jumped on. Tate, how are you? Good. Sorry for the delay. I was uh, closing a deal. So figured that's a worthy, uh, a worthy excuse for missing the start of the podcast, right? I, I believe this is your second deal that you've closed today. Is that correct? This is true. All Which right. So, so we're, we're talking about buyers or liars, sellers are worse, right? So, you know, you get the accepted offer on your top, your quote unquote top dollar offer through the letter writing campaign. They say, I want to sell. They, they mail back. You call them. You're like, I'm ready to close. And then crickets. You never hear from them again, right? Yeah. How, how do you go about getting that deal closed? And because you came late, I'm not going to tell you what Mike said, which was well, a great I, answer. Well, I go with what Mike said, then that's probably the tried and true approach. And whatever he said, I second. <laughs> my, yeah, my, yeah, money loves speed, right? <laughs> no, you, I, how, how quickly can you close these deals and do due diligence? 24 hours, 48 hours? I mean, we're closing a deal. We got the accepted offer in this morning. Due diligence went out today. And I think we'll probably have a deed emailed to them this afternoon. Um, so hours. Yeah. I mean, like, like Zeno probably said, it's money loves speed. It's, it's, it's all about being efficient. The quicker you can get them paid and rewarded for doing a job that you're asking, the more likely they are to uh, live up to their end of the deal. Well, is this a Tate Litchfield super, you know, uh, superhero, you know, like, you know, power no. to do due diligence in two hours. Mike, how long does it take you to do due diligence? Uh, it doesn't take me any time at all. My VA does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but how long does it take the VA to do it? <laughs> oh, if I get accepted an offer, it's it's done deal that day. Done and deal. I'll probably have it sold that day too. So it's, you know, we'd like to be very quick. You know, Boy, you have to be quick. You have to be. Come on. I mean, this is what we do. This I know. Is, I know. You know, you, we do, you know, deals quickly and that's we and we're not worried about one we're doing lots of deals right and our systems allow that so uh, it's a quick process the va i don't you know if i gave it to her right now we'll be done uh within a couple hours all said and done and then uh, deals done it's said said and done is there any competition has there have you guys ever run into uh hey got your offer um i got three others just like it yours is the lowest i'm gonna pass mike anyone ever ever say that to you I have never had that happen, ever. I've never Eric? had anybody uh, say that to me. I've had people say that they've received other offers. Um, they've never, um, you know, shared that offer with me or told me who it was from or anything like that. So, you know, when, when someone says that, you know, and they don't back it up with anything, you got to wonder if they're actually, you know, trying to, to bargain with you or if, or if they really do have another offer. I mean, I believe they, they certainly could, um, but uh, it hasn't been an issue nonetheless. Yeah, Tate, how about you? You know, I've had people try to uh, use that as a negotiation tactic, and I always kind of flip the whole situation on them. 
you know, if they were to say, oh, I've got two other offers, I would say, oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, thank you for the heads up. Unfortunately, if there's people buying in that area, I'm not interested. And you take the deal right away from them and say, yeah, I, I want to buy land in the middle of nowhere. And if, if other people are buying and trying to develop out there, this isn't the right area for me. And I'll be like, yeah, I, I don't think this is what I want anymore. Good luck. Go with them. If they're offering you more, that's the right thing to do. And nine times out of 10, people are like, uh, well, you know, you contacted me first and uh, you've been <laughs> most prompt. And it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. And then oh, I, 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 I love, I love the is back. That really? I mean, is that, is that crazy talk or? Uh, I, I've had people, <laughs> I've had people like insist that I buy it. Yeah. Right. Like, no, no, no. I, I know, I know that yours is, you know, I have other offers, but I, I insist because I'm dealing with you. I feel, tr I feel like I can trust you. You say, you're gonna, oh, you just told me you didn't want to do the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> All right. We'll do it. We'll do it in, in, you know, 12 hours. Hey Mark, I have a question though for the other guys on the call. Do you ever prolong that buying process? Not Mike Zeno, but Mike, what, Zeno what do you, what do you do? Well, there are, but sometimes if there's a, if it's maybe a, could be a new area. It could be if somebody I'm buying land from them, then they have land somewhere else. You know, it could be something I'm not familiar with. Maybe I just don't want to test the market out, and I don't want to. I'm not sure. You know, there are times. There are times, but that's only because it serves me, right? I'm not to be greedy. That sounds greedy. I'm sorry, but if it serves the need of the business, right? You know, there's reasons it may be. Yeah, but other than that, if it's a deal that you know we offer, our offers are so ridiculously low. So if it's accepted, I mean. It's something we're probably going to jump on pretty quick. So not typically. Eric Peterson. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'll do it from time to time just to make sure I've got the funds available or, you know, maybe I'm taking my time with due diligence cause I'm focused on other things or, or what have you. Um, you know, my, VAs are still training in certain areas and they're not always the most efficient yet. So, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take my time with it, but um, generally I'll stay in contact with the seller and, and let them know I'm still working on it. And, you know, um, never been an issue. I was going to get a kiss, I guess. She didn't realize. I, was <laughs> I mean, Laura can give you a kiss. <laughs> I, I think this is video. Like, our, our views will go way up as far as I'm <laughs> on video. So um, from a marketing perspective, take that kiss, Mike. <laughs> She's already gone. I got the coffee though. You oh, missed out. E yeah, even better. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's pivot. I think, I think we've dealt pretty well uh, with dealing with sellers. Let's talk about today's selling platforms. There's definitely some movement in the industry. I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but CoStar, which is a big public real estate company, has bought out uh, Lands of America, I believe, Land and Farm, uh, Land Flip. They've bought out the lands. So, and they're jacking up the prices. That being said, where are we getting our sales from? So let's start with Tate Litchfield. Tate, your favorite platform to get sales. My favorite platform is Craigslist by far, but I'm leaning towards working at landmoto.com. Ah, a little plug, a little yeah, plug. Scott's uh, changing the game up there a little bit. He's kind of taking it back because there's just some, like you said, there's some big changes going on with the land.com. So um, I'm really liking his approach and haven't had a sale yet from there, but uh I know it's just a matter of time, like any good thing, but Craigslist is definitely my uh, favorite place. Craigslist. Eric Peterson. Yeah, I mean, most of my leads are, are still coming from Craigslist. Um, I still have my land and farm account. They haven't raised my price yet, though they told me, I don't know, a month or two ago they were going to more than double it. Um, and I'm just waiting till they raise it and then I'll, I'll probably cancel immediately. Um, but uh, yeah, Craigslist, and um, I'm also using Scott's website now. Um, he just kind of opened that up last week, and I've been 
posting properties up there and um, you know, we'll see how that goes. So. Awesome. Awesome. Mike Zeno. My favorite say, platform. Well, I don't know if you're going to call us a platform, but I'd say like 90, you know, 80% of the sales I do on my buyers list, you know, and I think it's important that you often mention this, that we don't know what's going to happen in the industry. We don't know what's going to happen with all these other private websites. So if you don't have, if you're not backed up by your buyers list, you know, I'm not building that cachet of people that want land and want it where you have it, then you could put yourself at risk of, you know, of, uh, you know, when they do things like increase prices and change. I also, I still, I still love eBay. <laughs> I know you're going to, Wrinkle your eyebrow. I, I mean, I took a piece of land for 150 bucks and made uh, almost 2,000 on terms deal. I, I don't know. I, I like eBay. I love it. You're an island amongst yourself. <laughs> the only one that loves eBay. I haven't liked eBay in years. I used to love eBay. I don't know why the Zen Master is able to sell on eBay, and and I can't. But or I won't. You know what it is? I don't have I don't have patience anymore for the eBay buyer. Right, they want to they want to buy and then they back out and then I have to pay the eBay fees. I, I just have I have no patience for it when there's no eBay fees on Craigslist or Facebook, and especially the buyers list. So, Mike, what's your what's your deadbeat ratio on eBay? Um, it comes in they come every so often, but you know I make the deals irresistible and good communication. When people are making bids, I communicate with them. I mean, there there yeah, there is a strategy and. Um, it just works for us. I mean, this is a great, the one we just sold to this uh, gentleman. He's, this is great in an area where I have a ton of land and uh, he's going to, he's going to be using He has a trucking business through there. I think he's a bounty hunter. If anybody goes defaulting on my notes, I got a great guy there now. So this is great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got my muscle out there now. This is great. <laughs> I love it. I love I it. I told him, I said, I may need you. I'm there, man. I should want people. <laughs> move okay <laughs> this this is a great hgtv reality show <laughs> well, I was zen, the zen master and, and the bounty hunter he, he paid promptly and he is now uh my favorite note holder i like this guy <laughs> wow uh tate the last two sales where do they come from uh craigslist they did come from craigslist they but the buyers from. list is always steady I mean, I, yeah, I, I kind of left that off, but yeah, buyer's list, you know, we do a deal of the week from the buyer's list. So yeah, it's definitely my preferred and that's the Holy grail, right? In this business, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all about the buyer's list. It's probably one of the most valuable things that you can have and not, uh, not have other people kind of copy or replicate. Right. Right. Uh, Eric, how about your buyer's list? Um, it's that, that was it's, quite a sigh, Eric. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> it can be frustrating. It's my buyers list is pretty big. Uh, I mail them weekly, um, and I've had limited success there. Um, I certainly don't sell every property I I send out, you know, every week. Um, but you know, I continue to work at it. I do believe that it's it's a valid strategy. I just myself haven't had as much luck as I, I guess I'd like to have in it. So I'm probably uh, just under a thousand on my list. That's great. I'll, I'll have to look so. at your, one of your deals of the week. I have to go in and opt in and then I'll, I'll pick yeah. it apart. Because right. if, I had, if I had a bet, it's either the offer's weak, there's not enough urgency, or there's not enough scarcity, right? Yeah. Um, because it's going to be one of those three things or there's not enough in the bank with those thousand people. So up front, the relationship wasn't strong enough with your autoresponder series, giving the value. And it'd be like, you know, we're like dating, right? And you meet right. me, you're like, Hey, uh, you know, you want to, can I kiss you? You're like, Whoa, Whoa, easy. Ask me a question first about myself. Right? Like why right. me and dine me? And then warm me up and then, okay, let's go in and be like, hey, do you want this 40 acre parcel? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. But if that first step isn't solid, then I think it can make it difficult. Mm -hmm. Mike, that's what do you think? I think that's interesting because you just kind of maybe think about when people, if I, you know, 
if I were to get on the phone with somebody and they were selling their property to me, right? First thing when they start, they call me up. Generally, I don't jump into the whole sale. I'll just start, I'll key in on them. I'll just start talking to them. Something will come up of mutual interest and, and we'll just, we'll, we'll connect. And then when it's all said and done, that whole, might take a couple minutes, might take 30 seconds, may, I don't know, but I like to talk and you know, and although I don't do these calls now, my, my VA does and I talk to her about this, but the thing is that you, you build this relationship Okay, yeah, so let's talk about the land now. And it's like, oh, no, it's not just the first thing. Uh, okay, so how much for your land? And it's the same as asking for, like, kiss you just said. You know, you don't – you got to build into it. You know, you got to get a, a – you build this kind of back-and-forth dynamic where you guys get a little chuckle out of them. They laugh. You know, now you know you got them. And then you, you go right into it. So, yeah, I, I think that you brought up a valid point there. Yeah, I mean, and that kind of leads us to the next topic, which is nobody wants to talk on the phone anymore. So Tate, how do you kind of get over that issue where you've got a lead and, you know, the old saying is the secret to making money online is the phone, but nobody wants to talk on the phone. So how do you, how do you, you know, get that rapport going when somebody doesn't want to talk on the phone? You know, that's interesting. Um, and I have noticed that a lot of people are more, more hesitant to pick up the phone. Um, you know, I'll, I've done deals via text messaging. I've leave voicemails. The one thing, whether or not they want to answer my phone calls is a different story, but I'm going to call them because that's professional. Um, as soon as I hang up with somebody, the first thing that we do is we send an email and a text message, just, you know, follow up saying, Hey, it was great talking with you. If you need more information, don't be afraid to reach out via text message, Facebook me, whatever you want, we're available and we're flexible. So um, yeah, I think that the phone is kind of the gateway drug to that communication, to that trust. I don't know. I mean, you just got to do it. I mean, I don't love being on the phone either, but it's necessary. Yeah. Eric Peterson, how about you with your, with yours actual, the sale piece? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it, for me, it kind of depends on the buyer. Um, sometimes they don't share their phone number. Sometimes I'll ask for it. They don't give it. Um, so then, you know, I'll just continue communicating the way that, that they started communicating with me, whether that was email or text message. Um, and, you know, I just try to answer their questions, ask them questions and, um, you know, try to build a little bit of a, you know, relationship there and, and go from there. But, uh, I, it's certainly, not something that always happens. I don't always get the, the potential buyers on the phone. So, or actual buyers, you know, sometimes I've done sales just through email or text message as well. All right. Yeah. How about you, Mike? I think it's interesting. I think it comes, um, you know, we deal with such a gap in terms of the age of the people that we're working with. Right. So we have some, even like say on the buy side, I, I mean, everything from an older person, not having an email and only buying the property through written communication, which I've done, you know, because these people are just, you can see, you get that. I mean, you get that scraggly letter in the mail where you can know it's an elderly person writing on it and they, they don't have an email and you, you know, I've done deals that way. And then it comes down to their older generation. People might want to be on the phone and then you start working your way down to the younger generation who's tech savvy and likes to uh, use. So you really just got to, you know who you're dealing with and you get a feel from that right away. And then I think what Tate said is true. One time on the phone opens you up to, you've built that relationship and you've got the personality shining through and now it can go to text messaging or, or whatever kind of messaging, you know, you've broken that barrier. So, uh, but that being said, there's tons of deals that get closed um, without ever talking to anybody on, on eat through email. I mean, it's just, it's becoming a more and more accepted form of communication. Uh, there's so many, positives to it you know people just don't like talking on the phone sometimes so there's all those reasons kind of bundled in but that makes us have to be flexible right and we have to be adaptable and we have to have an array of skills or have uh, assistance with an array of skills that can handle any of those um, situations yeah yeah and that you know tate like uh bay your one-on-one -on -one coaching client just you know uh pinged you on base camp and she's talking about Hi, Tate. I made one cash deal, net sales 10K. Made another two terms deals. One is 279 per month for 48 months, and one is 2,500 per month for four months. They are um, all in Colorado. Um, you know, Bay is not she a hates it. native English speaker. 
right? She hates talking on the phone. And she hates talking on the phone. Um, so how is she closing these deals? Well, she, first of all, she's gotten over that fear, right? She may not enjoy talking on the phone, but she understands that she's got to do it. Once she does it, that opens the door to other forms of communication. So then she's getting them on via text message or email and she's closing the deal that way. So you've got to present yourself. You've got to introduce yourself. And I think that's something that everybody skips in this business. We'll get a lead. And the first thing you want to do is jump into what the property is and what the pricing is. But how many people actually stop and say, hey, let me introduce myself. Let me tell you about me. Let me give you some background information on who you might be doing business with. Because ultimately, if you don't trust me, then we shouldn't do business together. I mean, that's something that I do and I make, make sure it's how I start every conversation with a new client. Because I, wanna, I want them to know that, yeah, this is my number. You call me, I'll answer kind of thing. And if you don't like me, then we don't, I don't want to work with you, right? And it just kind of it, it works. I mean, people get that sense of confidence and then I tell them, yeah, text me. I'll answer your questions via text. So I don't know. I think that's what she's doing. I mean, she hates being on the phone, but she made 10 grand yesterday. Not bad. Not yeah, bad at all. Bad. Yeah, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> better sure. than my deal. I think that, uh, I think that sometimes people um, forget that it's not – the you know you learn this that the conversations it's not a it's 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 just a relaxed conversation like we're talking right here all you're doing is communicating uh, the truth of what's going on you you know you're being transparent you're letting them know this is the, you know buy or sell side doesn't matter you know you're dealing with people and you're having a a nice conversation it's just like pretend you're talking to your friend about you know something you don't it doesn't have to be very stiff and formal and you know in fact it's better if it's not it's just like tate said hey this you know i always say it's my wife and i you know it's just two of us so we, we take pride in what we do and you know you just kind of build that right into it and it doesn't need to be a stressful thing it's actually a very relaxed conversation and that comes with experience and knowing the different terminology that we have and you know the different habits you know you have different things in the business that you learn as you go along but it's really just it's, you can take a deep breath and relax and enjoy it. Yeah. Speaking of one of my, and this is going to lead me into one of my tips of the week, but um, a great tip of the week is oh. this. Uh oh. <laughs> Mike, you're already hazing me? No. I, guess it's, it's, I guess it's not going to matter what I say. No, I wasn't going to haze you. I'm just thinking tip of the week. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Well, we're at that point. We're going to go to the tips of the week. Um, I think. Uh, I just saw in the app store that Jot Not Pro just came out with a updated version. <laughs> but it's, it's never going to get old, is it, Eric? <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. All right. So one of my tips of the week is going to be this <laughs> iPhone app called Clip, C-L-Y-P, because it allows you to, to record your voice and email it off. And then it's a little bit more intimate as far as response and creative. Um, but let's start with Tate. Tate, what's your tip of the week? All right, so my tip of the week is actually a book, and um, I'm sure some of you have read it already. It's by Seth Gooden, and it's called All Marketers Are Liars. You guys read that book? I love that book, yes. It's fantastic. I read it over uh, the weekend, and basically he talks about how successful salesmen, they do something different than non-successful people, and that's they tell a story. And he breaks it down into basically five different steps or processes that these successful, you know, salesmen take. And um, I don't know, I really, I found the book to be really, really interesting and very informative. And he, his style of writing is super easy to read. And I don't know, I just, I like the fact that he says, hey, we're telling a story, but it has to be a story that's believable, right? It has to be something that people can relate to. And if you take that logic and apply it to what we do. We sell rural property often in the middle of nowhere, right? We're selling an idea, what somebody could use the property for. We're selling a story or a vision. And if you start to apply the principles that he teaches to our business, I mean, I, I guarantee that you're going to have sales. I did it this morning and I have one, right? Like easy as that. So I highly recommend this book to anybody who's looking to improve their marketing game. Seth Godin, all marketers are liars. Great tip. Eric Peterson, landopia.com. What's your tip of the week? He's like scared now to say anything. 
Yeah, so let's see. It's going to be an iPhone app. It's called uh, Jot Not. Pro- no. Um, <laughs> um, no, I think uh, if this, then that for the iPhone. Um, I don't know. I just uh, downloaded it today. I've been using the uh, the website for a long time, but uh, I realized they had an iPhone app and, um, you know, it's the same concept. Um, but uh, it looks like there's, there's some good, uh, some good little automation tools here. Um, Can you so, give us an example of, of how you're going to use it? Like one of your applications? Nothing, nothing directly for the business yet. I got to explore it some more, um, more like, you know, just personal type things like, you know, set my thermostat to such and such a temperature when I w- walk in the door kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I think the possibility is there to um, incorporate some things for the business. I just uh, haven't got there yet. Well, I have a tip so. for you because I had, I made a YouTube video on it. All right. And so what you'll do is let's say you're getting, you're in a County, right. And you're mm-hmm. sending out your offers there, but maybe you're going after a for sale by owner people who are on Craigslist as well. So you'll create a little recipe that if that, that, that key word comes up on a Craigslist posting, then it'll automate sending them an introduction to you. I would be interested in buying your land. And, you know, this is what it, the range I'll typically pay. If you have interest, email me back. And now you've automated another, you know, another uh, deal flow channel. Now that being said, your response rate's not going to be 1% because right. if they've gone through the for sale by owner uh, effort of actually listing on Craigslist, they're probably not going to take your quote unquote top dollar offer right away. But you know, even still, if you get a 0.5% response rate, it's cost you nothing except for the, the cost of automating the setup and you know, mm-hmm. follow up. So that's my tip of the week for you, Eric right. Peterson. And if you just go on the, uh, Go on youtube.com forward slash the land geek and look up IFTTT. And I, I have a walkthrough on how to do it. Uh, Mike Zeno, the Zen master. What's your tip of the week? Well, first thing I want to say is you reminded me of something when you were talking about uh, the clip because I have actually been having success with just on my phone hitting the button and talking to people and letting it send to them. And I found, you know, because sometimes you do the you know tech speak to text and it doesn't come out right just hold the button and talk to them and people respond they love it they hear my voice and you know i'll always say that to our joke i just thought you might want to hear my voice so that's why you know little little giggle and whatnot and so um that made me think of that the other thing was cool is what tate said is um we're actually if you think about this right we're like right in the middle we got people that bought all this land a long time ago on a story on a dream right and then things happen I always tell people when I'm buying land from them you know I know you had visions and things happen and now you have the land and you don't want to pay the taxes and so on and so forth so there's all these people on one side that had dreams years ago and bought the land and for something you know life happens as I tell them and they didn't they didn't do anything now they sell to us and what do we do with some somebody else with a dream so we're like like right in the middle there it's kind of cool like of like well not for these people whose dream is kind of fizzling out, but somebody else's dream that's puffing up. So I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty cool. And I guess, I don't think, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I just went on GoDaddy and bought landdreambroker.com. <laughs> Has anybody ever recommended the book, book E-Myth Revisited? I mean, that book is phenomenal. I don't know. Has that been recommended? Yeah, well, it's a great recommendation in 1998. Oh, it's still. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know still, what? I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's I'm a great the, book. Guy, it's a great book. Yeah, the, the book blows me away. I mean, yeah, he's talking about pies and all this kind, of, but it's all about working. You know, you know, like he says, you know, someone has a great idea about opening a restaurant that goes into the and starts working at the restaurant. Someone wants to do this, they start working at this. We start a land business. You start working in the land business, but that's not the goal. It's not going to move the needle, and it's going to just bind you up and all your time. So, I think it's a great listen, even though it is a little dated. I, but I think it's a I think it's a great listen. Um, no, I'm, I'm hazing you. I, I, th- I think it's actually a required read or listen because it, right. it's, it's so important to get back to the basics of thinking like an entrepreneur. Right. And I have to say, Homo Deus, I'm just about finished it, has blown my mind. People at the fire station think I'm not. I start talking to them about algorithms and stuff. They're all looking at me. I'm like, my, you're like, you're just a biochemical algorithm. <laughs> 
so true. That book is, I'm listening to it again. I'm going to buy the book too, I think. That book is phenomenal. I, I'm, I'm making my children read it. And then when they're done with that, they have to read Sapiens. Yeah, I'm going to so, go to that one next, even yeah. though it's a prequel, right? That comes first, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and it's summer now for my kids. So it's like there's, there's summer school reading. He yeah, has I a course, that, you know, yeah. online that you can do the history of the uh, universe or something. It's an online free course he does. It's pretty cool. I saw it. Oh, I, I got to check that out. Yeah. That's a great tip. So uh, E-Myth Revisited, <laughs> as well as reading Homo Deus yeah. and taking the online course. All right, fantastic. Well, my tip of the week is um, a little glue gift for your buyers. And glue stands for giving a little unexpected extra. And I came across this site, and I'm not exactly sure this is going to apply for our business, but I'm not exactly sure it's not going to apply for our business. Maybe uh, Eric Peterson can, can actually go there and, and tell us definitively, although he's probably so angry about the Jot Not Pro joke. He'll just be like, no, it won't apply. But that being said, check out your, Y-O-U-R, own, O-W-N, maps.com, your own maps.com. And what you can do is you can send out your buyer who just bought that, you know, 20 acre parcel from you in Colorado or that five acre parcel from you in Nevada or that half acre parcel in New Mexico and create a map for them as a little glue gift. What do you think, uh, Eric Peterson? I'm looking at it now. This sounds create interesting. So create your own map, go to the mm -hmm. editor. So does that take you from anywhere to the land or a map of the layout of the land, like a layout of the... No, it says search for city or country. So, ooh. Let me see if we can put GPS coordinates in here. Yeah. No, this is interesting. If this could, because I've been looking take for something anywhere. somewhat like this. Yeah, search for city or country. Uh, you, can, you can personalize okay. it, you can finalize it. I mean, look, it's, it's nice. It's a nice gift for sure. I, I would do this for your VIPs. I see. So you get a map sent to them is what it is. Yeah, oh. yeah. They can put it up on their wall. I mean, talk about a, a, a phenomenal glue gift. Yes. Right? Yeah, I guess it, it depends on where your property is. If it's too rural, um, there's probably not much to look at. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. But, but uh, it is you can, cool. You can, like you can kind of you know, scroll out. You can zoom right. out and kind of give them a whole I might idea. get one of these for the areas I take down and put it right behind me. I like this. Well, here, let me, let me see. I, let me go to like a little area. I've got some problems. Take a look at the map of my land. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Well, I found one that's really rural. It, it came up. And I'm going to scroll out. Ooh. And as I scroll out, it gets a little bit more interesting. So when you zoom in, it's not that interesting. Mm -hmm. But when you scroll out, it does get a little interesting. And then you can personalize it. You can make a header, a subheader, and a tagline. Uh, you can place coordinates for your tagline if you want. And then you can finalize it, and you can you know, do different styles, green, oh, red, yellow, cool. colored. It comes up right away when you type it in. I'll tell you what. This is a re I'm going to drop the mic here. This is a great tip. You can't drop the mic on your own. Wow, that's pretty. That's I pretty can't. Slick. I don't know, but this is awesome. All right, see. This is pretty cool. As soon as you start I'm, typing it, it pulls up the map. I mean, yeah. You know, you know, I'm dropping the mic on is Scott Todd because he's <laughs> always coming up with these great tips. Finally, I'm I'm on a roll, guys. Between yourownmaps.com and Airtable.com, I think the land geek is stepping up his game. Eric Peterson's snickering over there. Hey, I love Airtable. I've been using it a lot. So, all right, there you go. Wow, this is pretty. All right, this is good. I like this. is really good. More for me, a big map of where I'm buying the land, and just want to put it right behind me there. So, when we do these parts. I can have a big parcel. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not. It a lot that. of different applications. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can get standard. You can get the large. Um, you know, it's look. It's not cheap. Fifty-five bucks for the standard. Seventy bucks for the large, but look in the big scheme of things, if I'm paying you ten thousand dollars over time, this is a nice glue gift, right? So maybe once you get your money out, you send them the glue gift. Yeah. What do you think, Mike? I like it. I like it. Uh, I think there's some there's a lot of use. Uh, I mean, there's probably more functions. We're just looking at this pretty quickly here, so I'm going to check it out in my depth. Tate, what do you think? Uh 
It's really cool. <laughs> There's nothing bad to say about it. It's really cool. I'm looking at an area right now, and I'm like, uh, yep, I'm buying that for me. All right, let's, let's buy it, and let's just see how the quality looks, and let's do like a quality assurance check first before we send out to a buyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it because you could include it in like, I don't know, there's so many different approaches. I'm, my brain's going like a million miles an hour thinking how I could work it in and, and help somebody out with it because give them good GPS coordinates, outlines. I don't know. There's a lot of different approaches here. I like it. You know, what's interesting about this, and I think they're doing a nice job at that, at, you know, and just a good, a good business tip is they have order includes free returns. I love the risk removal on anything, right? Like our, our guarantee on our land is 90 days, right? And then a 360 day guarantee, you know, exchange guarantee. We've removed all the risk. Um, at our next round table, we'll have to ask you guys what your, uh, your guarantee policy is. Um, although knowing Eric Peterson, his is probably, you know, you get Jot Not Pro <laughs> and a guarantee. <laughs> Oh, it, it never gets old for us. All right. I want to, I want to thank all the listeners for putting up with our terrible jokes and um, just remind everybody uh, if you like the, if you like the round table format, let us know. Uh, please subscribe, rate and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review, put a little subject line round table and uh, we'll send you for free. The $97 passive income launch kit. Uh, I want to thank Zen master Mike Zeno. Eric, Jotnot Pro, Landopia.com, Peterson, and Tate Litchfield from Frontier Properties, USA.com. Uh, guys, are we good? We're awesome. Yeah. Totally. All right. We'll see you guys. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, wait. whoa, whoa. whoa. Are, are we not doing it? Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot. <laughs> are we, we not let, doing it? We got to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Scott, I mean, we gotta make it yeah, we got to make this good. Because when Scott listens to this, I want him to be like, oh, man, I wish I was there. I wish I could have said that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, you know what's funny, though, is that we've really improved the Land Geek app. So if you're listening to these podcasts, um, the app now is, is actually has a really solid podcast player. And it'll keep your spot. Like, I've been hesitant to, like, kind of talk about that, the Land Geek app because it hasn't been – it's not ready for prime time. But if you're just going to listen to the podcast right now, it is pretty good. Um, also, uh, Mike Zano, I know we filled up the June uh, flight school, yes. but if you're ready for July flight school, go to landgeek.com forward slash training and get on a call with Mike or David and see if uh, you know flight school is right for you. It's so popular because it works. It's like the most well, popular. It's it's incredible. Yeah, People it's love it. it's yeah it, it, because we make you execute in real time. It's you have no choice but to succeed. You have no choice. Exactly. You have no choice <laughs> but to succeed. I mean, it's a 10x ROI minimum. So um, how can you not do it? So, but go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn more. Uh, boot camp is full. But get on the wait list, the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp uh, and start looking to make your plans in October for Orlando. Nice. Um, because uh, Scottsdale is booked. But if you want to come to Scottsdale, uh, if we have cancellations, we're gonna have, we have a queue right now for uh, for uh, you know getting you in that room because Mike will be there. You bet. Uh, Tate, will you be there? Oh yeah. Tate will be there. Eric, you gonna be there? Yep, I'm coming. Awesome. So it's gonna be a lot of land geeky knowledge for sure, and um, yeah, it'll be awesome. Super popular now too. The boot camps they're just super popular. I mean, there's so much knowledge being shared there. There's this is so much. I mean, it's really, really popular. Yeah. I mean, you know, and the great thing about boot camp, it really is a training. It is intensive yes. training uh, weekend. It's not a lot of rah rah, if, if any rah rah. There's not a lot of fluff. It's you come there and we're going to train you. And you're going to walk out and the land investing clouds are going to dissipate and everything's going to become clear. And uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, Eric, how many have you been to now? Um, I think that'll be the third or fourth. I'm third not or fourth, actually yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, you know, like Tom Willis has been like eight and he just keeps coming back, you know, getting back to fundamentals, going into the advanced group, the advanced sessions for the, for the coaching clients. Um, it's just great. So, um, all right, ready? 
Tate, you're going to lead us? Yep. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. Let freedom ring. Oh, oh, that's like man. the best of it. Just end us. Just turn it off right now. Scott, Scott, would, Scott. is just going to be cringing right now. <laughs> that's the best of uh, it. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>